What are your heroes?
spirit mend. Alright, well, hello everyone. Well, I need to get like six more leather or something like that. So don't mind me getting here. Alright, uh, How's everyone doing tonight? Hopefully well. <laughs> Alright, so tonight, um, I guess like usual, I'll start off answering any questions that people had, then I'll jump into other random topics. Um, I didn't have too many questions from, well, I guess throughout the week, a few, but uh, most of them are shorter, so I shouldn't be going through so much like log stuff to, uh, this week at least, but I can cover something else after that. Oh, and sorry, I do have a cold, so yeah. Alright, um, first question. So this one um, from May the Gun um, on Twitch. May asked, would a 400 incandescent uh, silver be best to use over a 385 crest of Paku? Silver slims 454 higher, but I am worried about how much DPS I would lose due to having to move five yards away from non-silver wearing people. This does them. So we're gonna go to raid bots here. Compare pull in his lane. Um, the uh, she's wearing the sliver right now, um, along with a ignition mage fuse. All right, so um, I could send this just as it is, and it would pull up just the one gear set. But I wanted to pull up the other things that he had. 3d5 crest of okay. So, um, doing this, like if you're just comparing like a couple items that you don't have, uh, the gear compare thing works pretty well for that. Alright, so, um, if I don't change anything here, it's just gonna have this first set be like the default set. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it that way. Uh, like the default name, that's uh, this currently equipped set right here. Um, let's just call this uh, liver uh, right, now I'm going to add uh, rest. I don't know. But, alright, 3D. 
All right, so just typing it in here is going to replace whatever item that you have in whatever slot that it's specified. So like if you typed in the name of a helm or whatever, it would obviously automatically go to the helm slot. But like for if you do like a trinket or a ring, uh, you have to specify like what slot you're gonna be overriding. That's kind of like what this is doing. It's overriding what your currently equipped set is. So everything else is gonna be copied over the exact same, except whatever um, you have extra in this like little section here. So I'm replacing trinket one, uh, which was the silver, with the crested paku. Um, if I don't add anything to the name, it's just going to name this gear set um, what's kind of in this area that's not filled in. It says Crested Paku 385 slot 1. It puts it in slot 1. But um, just because I want to make it easier to uh, look at in a minute, I'm going to just change this to being Crest slash. Um, now I'm going to. You could either just add another gear set or um, for doing this, it's going to be easier to duplicate gear set. Um, I'm just going to change this to Trinket 2. So now instead of replacing the sliver, I'm replacing the uh, Mage Fuse. Sliver. Uh, Alright, so this has basically the three different combinations. Um, possible with those three trinkets. Um, we have liver and fuse, uh, liver and all right, liver and fuse, crest and fuse, or crest and so. Um, okay, so we have the three different sets of that. All right, so. Um, all this other stuff is going to be just default. I'm just going to leave it at one boss. This real quick. Um, so for single target, it is actually suggesting to use the, uh, sliver and crest over the fuse. Um, yeah, I have to... Okay, yeah, this this is, um, so, I confused myself for a second there. Uh, this set that it has here, this was the currently equipped set. Um, but it is suggesting to do this replacement here. Um, if you ever wanted to, like, if you didn't do the, like, the renaming stuff and you, instead of, like, going back to running the sim again and checking to see what, like, sets you made up, um, you can click this full HTML report button over here like if you have a whole bunch of things simmed like a whole bunch of combinations it won't it'll uh disable this uh, open this up in another tab <laughs> um so this part this is like what actual simulation craft uh looks like as opposed to like the raid bot uh ui version of it um So these are the different profile names that we have here. Um, picking uh, the top one, like the liver crest. Um, if you scroll down, eventually you'll get to a point that, like this obviously has a lot of information, more than you would be able to see in, just in raid bots um, by itself. But if you wanted to look deeper into something, this would be a good place to do it. Um, but I was just going to go down to So here you can see the actual gear set used for the sim that had that, that DPS amount. 
um, but you can just do this to kind of double check to make sure that you have the right setup of things. Like uh, here, it has to crank it correctly how I believe I specified them. But yeah. It's So, um, the difference of using uh, sliver and crest, well, yeah, sliver and crest versus uh, crest and fuse. Um, uh, Four hundred and eighty. Yeah, okay, that's right. Uh, 484. Um, so, that 484 difference assumes... Um, I can actually double-check this. This actually will work out well because what we had open is exactly what we want to see. Um, if you look at this. Um, so, we're going to look at what uptime this is using with it. I haven't simmed Sliver myself ever before, so I don't know um, in raid bots like what its default is, uh, what it expect, what's its expected uptime. Okay, so it is looking at 100% uptime uh, for this. Um, you can see that um, right in this area. Uh, if you look at uptime, 100%. All right, so now. I guess you'd have to judge how often in each encounter you can stay, um, like, you know, out of that five-year range for 100% uptime. Um, there is a better way to do, to do this, like, um, I'm not sure exactly how to do it off the top of my head. I could get up, but uh, I'm going to skip on doing that just because I don't want to spend the extra time doing it at the moment. But I know you can change, um, this is, would be in advanced, um, advanced options. Bot, so like, uh, you have to do an advanced tab uh, then for it but I know you can change like um, you can override spell data and I believe you'd be able to do that to override the uptime on liver for the sim I'm not 100% positive on how to do that like I said 
so I wouldn't be able to actually sim this right now to show like what, for example, this exact sim would be, but having liver only be 80% uptime. Um, that would be like the ideal uh, situation for doing something like that. Um, but again, it, it's going to depend on, I guess, your other raiders, how often other people are going to be stacking on you, um, how well you position for it, and again, with like the mechanics of the encounter dictate, like you're not going to be able to be spread out for everything. Like you're going to want to be, you know, kind of close for either just for general healing or for um, like a, speci a specific manic uh, mechanic, like if you need to stack for it or something. Um, in general. I, one way we can kind of look at this, which is kind of like a, a definitely an estimating way. Um, I'm going to go back to, um, I'm going to do run sim again to uh, go back to having all, all the stuff I had before. Um, but now I'm going to do this sim, but getting rid of trinket slot one. Um, That'll work. Alright, so I was just trying to think of a trinket that wouldn't have any effect for DPS um, as a caster. So this is going to proc, or it's going to have strength or agility and it's going to, you know, proc stamina and healing. So this is essentially a zero DPS trinket um, that I can use to replace the sliver uh, spot. Um, item level doesn't matter, so. Uh, this would be simming against just a few. I think it's spot two. Um, I have to do a combination here. So, um, it, and you, uh, all right, so basically I'll be able to compare, um, like sliver and crest versus sliver and, or, uh, none and crest, uh, doing it like this. So this will be able to tell you exactly how much DPS that trinket is actually giving you.
go. All right, so it looks like um, 7% of your DPS is coming from the trinket. Uh, 1,014, basically 1,400, uh, 1,394. Um, all right, so let's just say 1,400. Easy math. Um, Let's say you can get 75% uptime times 0.75. Uh, that brings it down to uh, 1,050 DPS instead of 1,400, so it's losing 350. Um. One thing that I'm not sure about is, I don't have it to test myself, is the rate that the stacks drop when someone is near you. Um, so we can't compare like 100% uptime versus, you know, if someone stands next to you for a second, you're going to lose some of your stacks, but not all the stacks. Um, so basically, he said it was 384 was the difference before. So, doing math. So Alright, so Alright, so to to compare this, the sliver and this is looking at having basically because in the sim it's going by it's having 100 percent uptime so like full stacks um going from full stacks to say zero stacks instantly so having like zero percent uptime uh or not zero percent uptime but like full uptime straight down to zero uptime 
you would need to have 60, only 63% uptime of having the buff to be equal to the 385 crack. Um, I think that that's pretty unlikely um, in most encounters. I think you'll be able to keep, and again, like that's max stacks to no stacks. So in most situations, I think you could probably keep, you know, roughly two thirds uptime on it, at least. Um, again, there, there are gonna be cases where some fights you might not be able to do that, like um, blockade, storm and blockade, for example. Uh, is one with, you know, the common strat is to, like, stack in a spot, move as a group. So, unless you have, like, a separate stack group for people with a trinket, um, in that case, I would say swap, uh, swapping it out would probably be worth it. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to say overall, it's probably still worth using. Um, but again, you're going to have to manage that yourself and making sure um, you can go back in a log and see backs of it. Yeah. Alright, so if you go into um, like your own log, uh, just go to buffs, um, then you can look at brilliance, I think is the Brilliance is the one that gives mastery. I think I believe that's the mastery proc uh, version of it. Uh, when you're at ten stacks. Yeah, that's just the um, number of stacks that you have. Yeah, so this is the amount of time. Uh, like for example in this log that he had the full 10 stack versus i guess you could also see it on the luster buff um the point where it's maxed out here um I don't know why at the beginning here it doesn't show this. Um, I'm guessing it actually is supposed to be at 10 stacks here. Yeah, so he actually did have 10 stacks here. Because he had it before the encounter started. Um, so he had the 10 stacks and he technically lost a stack um, right at this point. So this whole part of the chart actually should be up here. It's not showing correctly in the log. Um, but we had 10 stacks, and then at this point where the log sees that he they, he loses the stack, then it correctly drops down to the 9, um, etc. So, I mean, overall, his uptime was very, very high in this fight um, on Rossigan, but again, that's going to depend on, you know, like I said, strat, guild, and your own play. Um... But yeah, like I said, I, I think it'll probably be worth using in general. Um, and a case of you wanting to, sw uh, to swap it out on something that you know, the fight doesn't really uh, benefit from it. So top trinkets, yeah, sliver crest. Um, opulence not being used as often. Because again, that's a, a fight that there's a lot of stacking in that. 
And the fact, I guess, that during like the burst you get 100% crit anyway. Um, when like people bring the buff in. Yeah, it looks like actually at least in that's in mythic, but um. Yeah, I'm blockaded. It's not, uh, not, it's not in the top most common trinkets at least. But again, I mean, it is used in some law. Yeah, I would say overall, again, yeah, worth using. Um, but. Uh, just to give you an idea of the range of 5 yards, so you can see it visually. Well, real quick. Alright, so... Uh, So from where I'm standing, these two markers are exactly five yards from me. Uh, so that's pretty much the range that you need someone to stay away from you. It's like from here at blue to green, which I mean, most mechanics you could do that with. Um, hitboxes are a little bit tricky um, on some things, like with enemies, but with um, most player stuff that's normalized at least. But again, you can probably get away with it. Probably worth doing. So. I'll go ahead and jump over to the next question here. Um Right, uh ooh, this is from Bot Mike TV uh TV, Darup. Uh what is Mordrag's favorite color? Um Drag's favorite color right now. Playing Demon Hunter. I would say like that purpley fuchsia. I don't know. You technically call it a Demon Hunter color. But um I'm gonna go with chartreuse. That, that probably is gonna be his favorite color. Don't really have a good reason for why, but I'll have to ask him. All right. Next question, 22. Is it possible to make one macro for both Horde and Alliance Rachel? And if so, how? Um, this does not have a name who was submitted by. I think it might have been Zerhaus, but not sure. Um, Right. Um, this one's real simple. Uh, macro. Um, I guess I'll just do an example. But. have to actually test this to be sure that it would work but i think if you just have um pound show 
um, and just leave that blank after that. It should pick up the first available spell um, that you list. So if I have like slash you uh, shadow meld and then slash you berserking. Um, all right, yeah, it does show, it does not show the, uh, the icon for it. Hmm. So, fu like, functionally, I know it'll work. Um, like, if you just have, like, two spells, even if you don't have one in your spell book, it will try and use it. Like, it, like if I tried, if I hit this macro, and I'm on opulence or whatever, um, once I press the button, it would use, like, shadow metal or whatever instead. Um, but for icon, uh, to get that to show up correctly... I don't think there would be a way to do that. Now that I can think of, I can't think of any conditional that would allow that to work. Um, you, know, you could do things like if you're not even in combat, it wouldn't work because you there's there's no way for like the macro system to know what race um, like you're you are uh, for the encounter. I mean. Yeah, I don't think they're... I'm trying to think if there's anything. No, I don't think there's anything at all. Yeah, nope. Nothing that I know of, so I, I don't believe it's possible. If someone finds a way to make that possible, let me know. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's possible to have the tooltip update uh, dynamically for both, both races in one macro. But like I said, functionally, you can get it to work just by having the two abilities listed um, in order on the same macro. Next question. All right. Um, so this one, um, so I saw in your stream that you changed alert for weak or each of the Teach us the ways of making weak auras even stronger for raiding uses. I think you added a loud, a loud horn sound to an ability. Uh, all right, so first off, I'm gonna pull up the link to uh, I believe the weak or package that this was in. Of what ability this is for. Oh, I know actually. Alright. All right, so this was from um, the causes package. Um, this has a whole bunch of different um, weak ores for like all the encounters in it, but I was just going to use this as an example. But here's the link. I'll just paste it in the chat real quick. All right. Um, so obviously, you just Click the copy weak aura import string. Um, you go to game. Uh, say if you didn't have this there already, you type or click new at the very top. Click import, and then 
hold control V to just copy paste this whole thing in. Um, in most cases, you would just say like um, done or whatever. Uh, if you already have a copy, this screen is going to pop up um, for you to either create a copy of it or to um, like update your current Ricora. Um, I don't want to do that right this second, um, but I'll say in general, updating is just updating, um, like clicking this little button to update auras is usually going to be fine. Uh, but there, are, I have had a couple cases where it does mess with the weak auras. Um, like if you did have some changes, it's still going to, well, I know if you've modified things then it's definitely going to overwrite it. So you just have to kind of be careful if you're doing update. Um, if you're doing create as a copy, uh, it's kind of a, a cheating way to do this. Companion app thing. So there's the week or a companion app thing. Um, let's see, I have something right now to update, so I'll show an example of what I'm talking about. And then I'll get back to showing how to adjust it. But alright, so if you have the week or a companion app thing, um, like when you have an up, uh, a week or that's been updated, it'll have like this little icon on it. And if you click that little button, um, it'll basically do the exact same thing. Like it'll go to whatever website it had. Like what it'll like pull the string from the website, and it'll be the same as like pasting it in game. Uh, when you do this, what you can do um, to like personally, because I know any like adjustments that I make myself to any weak auras, um, I just import it as a copy, uh, and move it, and drop it into the same folder group. And then I just go back and forth between the two versions and update like any changes that I update any changes that I need to make, like um, its position, for example, 275, negative 275, negative 100. I would like update that on this one as well. Um, but. That is definitely a lot more work, but that's like the safest way to update things to make sure that everything stays like any changes that you've made to them are going to be the same because you have the old copy to look at as you do that. But if you're just updating something that like you did no changes to, um, the easiest way to do that actually is like once you press this button to update it and once you have this window here, you can just right click and delete this, um, like delete your old aura and when you click import as a copy, it'll actually just like import it the first version. I guess. Not the first version, but like it won't like rename it to Reaping Afix Tracker, Afix Tracker 2. And like if it's in a group of things, it won't make rename a whole bunch of things to like being a 2 and stuff. But uh, that's, I guess, not super important, but it annoys me when it does that. And, like renames all those things in the package like if you're up to, uh, if you're getting something as a copy but anyway so that was a kind of a tangent but back to adjusting um i guess like notifications in week uh, uh Um, I think the actual aura that I updated was, I think, like, the Hex on Opulent. Alright, this one right here. Um, Hex of uh, Lethargy. So, on um, Opulence, you get that debuff that, like, makes it so if you move, like, you start building up stacks and very easy to die really quickly. Uh, for that, like, I want something to abs like make it super obvious if I have it. Like, yes, this pops up. Don't move, and you know, I could make it have a glow and all that sort of stuff. But personally, I like audio notifiers um, to make some things even more obvious, I guess, uh, just in case there's you know other things going on on the screen. 
Um, so if you just click on any week or uh, in the actions tab, this is how you uh, how you could add or remove sound. Uh, there's other ways to do it as well, um, but this is the easiest way probably. Um, so you just click on actions, and then um, now there's a couple different things here. Um, on an it, uh, this one, don't worry about that. That's going to be for more custom stuff. Uh, the usual ones that you're, the usual thing that you're going to want to use is on show. So when this week or is showing, it's going to start playing a sound and it's going to play the air horn sound. I'll give it a list of whatever you want to choose there. Um, and then sound channel master, uh, master. That's what the like, default is. And that's, that's the safest thing to use in general. Um, now you can loop that so that it'll just keep playing that sound clip over and over and over while it's showing, but that could get really annoying. Probably don't want to do that. Um, and this on hide section is basically the same as on show, but like if you wanted something to trigger when the week or goes away, so like say you had a, um, say you had something that was like, uh, The incandescence topaz buff on an uh, uh Like when you have the buff, it like builds up stacks, and then when the stacks reach a hundred, you gain like the hundred percent crit buff. Like on like my own weak ores, yeah, this one right here, grossly incandescent. Um, what I could do is. Like, so this week or is going to show up while I have the buff. Uh, but I could have something that's, like, uh, on hide. So, like, as a player, like, if the buff, the crit buff runs out or if that player moves out of range of me, I could have, like, a sound play to notify me of that. Like, um, so while the buff is up, it's not making any sound when I'm in range of it. But right when the buff disappears, it'll play the sound for um, some amount of second, uh, depending on how how you have it set up necessarily. Um, there's a couple different weird ways to do that to make it um, to work a little bit differently. You can do some other things with it, but um, like if you had this like playing as a loop, for example, you could make like you could have this loop thing buff 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 like over and over and then on hide you could stop the buff down uh, like stop the loop but, but stuff like that but in general you're just going to go to the actions tab go to sound click play sound and adjust whatever sound you want it to be and sound channel um you might notice that i have more sounds than like most people have <laughs> um, these are actually another add-on, um, but I find these extremely useful. Um, uh, uh, back to buff after, but um, like, um, I mean, they—they're just like the vocal versions of a lot of notifiers so like say if there's something that you, like an ad spawn and instead of like having a beeping sound when the ad spawn or something ads you can have it literally say ads and like it makes it a lot easier to have like several sound things going on at the same time if it just literally tells you exactly what is going on like ads or um i mean there's a lot here but like uh Stack. Stack, like if you need to stack up, or spread, or orbs, or immunity, like if you're supposed to use your immunity at a certain time. Um, like if there's a, you know, if you have a weak or a set up to when you need to, like an ability is going to go off that you need to immune. You can have it say immunity, or something like that, but there's a lot of, uh, a lot of really good um, things in here. And this pack works with that, uh, by default, um, it will work wow. with uh 
that one week core package that I had mentioned uh, from Causes that I linked in Raid, or not in Raid, uh, in, uh, well, I have linked it in Raid, in our Raid as well, our Raid chat, but, uh, in, uh, stream chat, but let me get the link to the weaker, or to the add-on real quick. Um, it's this one right here, uh, share of media causes, but it's, you know, real easy. Just install it. And if you do have that weak or package installed, they're already all preset to being the sounds that you, that are used from this, um, package. So yeah, there's all the instructions here that you would need for that. Definitely very helpful. Um, so, uh, let's see, a couple other ways to make Weekor stand out. Back to while real quick. Um, I guess just different ways to make the, the display more no noticeable. Um, like for this Buff Allies one, um, in display, uh, the show glow effect. Uh, if you just click that, you know, it's going to make the weak aura pop up like this by default when is it, whenever it's showing. Um, you don't want to go too overboard in this just because it's going to add, like, you're going to want to use this for things that are, you know, significant and important. Otherwise, you're going to probably just start to not pay attention to them as much. Um, there's a couple different glow options, like this is the action button glow, like, from the, you know, here could make the default wow action button. There's a couple other ones. Um, auto cast shine uh, has like these dots that rotate around the little button. And then pixel, I use a lot of things, uh, just like the lines that trail around. I personally prefer pixel or action button glow. I use action button glow for like the really, really important things, and then pixel for not as important things, but. Um, Definitely still stuff I want to notice, like uh, like when ads are fixating me, like the raptors on council, or I guess that's the only relevant thing. It also does it for the like Coltier and Marines on Jaina, but um, like on their nameplate, they have a little icon that has this little pixel glow. I used it also for like Spawn of Cahoon, but that was uh, last year. Uh, let's see what. Um, you can make things stand out a lot more with animations. Um, this is actually from another week or a package, but I like this. Um, all right, here we go. Um, like this, do not tamp trample text. Um, you know, it, it's just a text warning um, with like the timer for it. But I like the animation on this. So I actually use this on a couple of my other Weekoras. But um, to do this, they just made their own custom one for it. Um, so to do this, you just go to Animations tab. And like with the sounds, there's different ways to have this work. So um, there's Start, Main, and Finish. Um, Start is going to be how it first appears. So like, uh, I have this set to bounce. So when I first go click on this weaker, you're going to see it bounce. That'll be like when it first appears. That's the idea of start. So yeah, it bounced and then it's going to go into the main animation, which is what will normally be showing. And then um, finish is what it would show when it goes away. So let's have uh, Viral. Right. So when I click off of this, it's going to do its finish animation because it's not showing me anymore. Viral. But yeah, um, for this they just did uh, custom one second, um, every one second basically duration. It does a gradient pulse of 
the color red. So it's the default color is white. So white text. With this animation, every one second, it does a gradient toward red, and then fades away. So that's the idea of what this thing is doing. So that's a, uh, I don't know, to me, a very noticeable way to uh, like make just a normal like text thing stand out a bit more. Anyone else have any questions they would like to have me answer? Um, I'm gonna post the link in chat. You can either add it there, um, or you can just type it in chat. Um, I've gone over all the questions that I have for this week, um, and not too many, but I can answer anything on the fly right now if anyone has any questions. Well, let's go to another random topic. All right. Um. So here I will, since I'm on my warrior, um, my old prot warrior. I played it last expansion quite a bit, but not at all this expansion. Pretty much, I've leveled. Yeah, I've gotten all four levels just from doing any skinning that I need for like leather for world quests. But um. Right. Uh, I guess right now what I'm going to talk about is, I guess, more of a tanking thing um, with movement. I guess it actually helps for like any melee in general. But all right, so all right, so say you're fighting a mob. Um, this is mainly most important for tanks, but I mean it helps for DPS as well. So all right, so if I'm fighting this mob, um, my auto attacks might end up killing it, but. Um, I always want it to be attacking it from the front, or I mean, I always want it attacking me from the front, so, like, I don't ever want to, like, show my back to it, um, if I do, like, I can't block, um, and, I mean, it's gonna be taking more damage. Uh, the best way to do this is to use strafing, um, I know a lot of people strafe but I, th I don't know if people quite understand like the benefits to it. So like, say, um, um, like, I guess I'm trying to think of a good way to describe this, but, um, just for like, even like auto attacking, like if I'm, running away from this mob like yeah i'm running away from it but like you can even see here like as i'm running away going slow at the moment but well i also have a ton of movement speed i forgot uh 
because my my boot uh, legendary boots so have like 120 percent movement speed but like while you're moving away there's a good chance like a mob is going to stay up stay at the same speed as you and it's going to be able to hit you from behind um especially bosses with like huge hit boxes uh yeah again like you, you never want that to happen um the best way to do that is to strafe around it like while you're moving um so if i just press like w on my keyboard like if i need to move through this mob to get to the other side for whatever reason like if i had to pick up some or like if i need to go pick up uh this other guy back there um i need to fix my uh on this profile. Not supposed to look like that at all. Um, all right. So, if I need to go back there, like I could just press, like I just hold down W on my keyboard. Yeah, I'm gonna get there, but now I'm getting hit from behind. Like if I'm trying to go pick it up. Um, instead of doing that, like you can, I'm gonna hold my right mouse button and hold like U. If I hold Q, like, I'm actually not getting hit from behind while I'm doing that, as long as, um, I'm at least, like, I have, like, 180 degrees of, um, like, there's a 180 degree, like, window of, um, where, like, I can move, but still not have the, like, mob behind me. So, like, um, like, again if i needed to go over to get skull like a better way of doing it than just running straight towards it um i'm going to want to like strafe while i'm doing it and it's even better like if you strafe and jump because like while you're in the air you can still have forward momentum in like whatever direction you need to go but um like you can still have the forward momentum but you can also turn your character this actually works really well as like a hunter too because Especially like a BM hunter that has like no movement penalty, um, you can just constantly be turning in the air. Um, like as you jump and like just turn back, like like while you're holding your right mouse button, just turn back while you're in the air, like while you're moving. So like I'm holding E, jump, turn back, jump, turn back, jump, turn back, and you can constantly do that. Like as like I was mentioning as a hunter, like that's how you're gonna get like your auto shots off instead of just like running away from something. You wouldn't be attacking it at all. Um, but again, same thing as a tank, like as a warrior. Um, like as you face it, like um, let me kill this and actually take my boots off because not a good example since I outrun everything by quite a bit. As I'm jumping, as I'm jumping and turning away, like you can try and time it so that while you're moving away, like every time he does, like his melee auto attacks, so that hopefully you're facing like the mob while it's hitting you. Uh, this actually also works like while you're mounted, um, and like if you're trying to run through mobs and you don't want to get dismounted. Non combat. Um, Alright, say like you're gonna run through these mobs that are aggroed on you. Like if you just run through and you get hit from behind, there's a good chance you're gonna get dismounted. But you can do the same idea of jumping and turning, and keep like while you're when you have your forward momentum, you want to keep going in that direction still. But like while you're in the air anyway, um, like you can turn to face the mob and you have a much better chance of not getting dismounted. Yeah, um, again, this this is definitely a much more major point for, um, like, tanking, just because, um, again, you're going to be getting melee hits more regularly, like, while you're, you know, in a dungeon or something like that. Um,
and yeah, you, you don't want to like just expose your back all the time and just be getting hit. And myself my leather. Um I guess similar thought um when you're moving around a mob or moving like attack like fighting like several mobs like say if you need to like position these mobs um like or melee to better attack them like you can clump them up by how you strafe and like i think as a tank like you definitely want to be able to backpedal as a tank it's, like yeah a lot of people say oh you're a backpedaler that that's not good or whatever like as a tank it's still useful to be able to do that um, just for like micromanaging like any small movement like you can growl the mobs up like as they get close they're going to um, like fan out and like curve around so that's just what mobs do when you have a you know a pack of mobs Um, if I need to, like, adjust, like, the facing of them, if you look at, um, you'll see this mob that I'm targeting right now, um, he has the little red arrow of where he's facing. Um, you kind of want to use that to, like, that's basically the, the mob's hitbox, um, like in a boss or something, that's going to be huge, like, the size of the circle. But, like, if you, again, holding right, Holding my right click button, um, like on my mouse, and then doing like Q and E, like if you circle and you kind of think of that being the radius of the mob, like that's how you can you know spin a mob so that it isn't moving, but you can change its facing. Uh, you just need to make sure that you're staying roughly the same distance from that red circle. Like if I try spinning over here to spin him around, yeah, he's gonna move and reposition really strangely. But as long as I keep his, my distance from his red circle, roughly the same amount, um, he shouldn't lose position. type thing um actually i'll go back to my hunter um Um, like if you're, um, I guess, I'm trying to think of a, alright, this is more of like a, a questing type thing, but I guess would be relevant for, uh, 
like a ranged i mean i guess still helpful for questing but um the case happens during like mythic plus as well sometimes or some great mechanic type things all right so you need to like kite a mob uh the jumping thing is still extremely useful there um Actually, no. I think that's where it is. Okay. Right. Um. Like. Um. Using that, like the that concept of like forward momentum while you're jumping, thing. Um. Doing that like allows you to, like you could keep running in a direction, jump and turn and cast like an instant, and not have like any, like you're still move it at be the same as holding and moving forward like 100% of the time um but you know if you're using an instant like uh for example like I was going to oh, show that with like using like concussive shot or something like that um or I mean you could just like if you're trying to kill something it works just the same but like uh if you're doing like a slow or something like that um that extra I guess not extra but like the not losing that second of turn like either stopping or turning around um actually does you know, help uh that'll happen final all right so if i'm fighting this it just because of how I have my macro set up but all right so again I want to be strafing as I run from this so that um, when it does hit me it's gonna usually hit me from the front at least so it's not hitting from hitting me from behind and then I can like be casting um, actually Um, like, you can be casting, like, an instant while you're in the air. Um, just, like, with the hunter, like, disengage thing. Um, or, like, druid. Uh, like, their, uh, their wild charge, like, the, I guess, balanced druid, like, disengage virgin. Um, you can have your mouse, like, um, what I'm not doing here. Uh, I'm holding W to, like, move forward. And then I'm holding my left mouse. Uh, to like move my camera, but I'm still running like in a straight direction. I'm running that direction, but I'm using my mouse to turn around. Um, while I'm facing this way, I can press my space bar, and it's going to make me jump still the same direction I was going. Now, the difference is, um, like if I do this, um, I can right click. And that's going to change my direction to going, like, the opposite direction instantly. Um, now, when you are doing, like, an ability where you need to, like, uh, cast something that, uh, like, that you have to be, like, facing your back or whatever for, which is, like, in this case, like, the, like, disengage is what I was talking about. Um, while you're looking away, you can basically jump, right-click, and then hit you, like your disengage ability to um like instantly move in that direction that's like if you need to go super super straight it's a lot easier um to in general just jump and turn 180 degrees for me like that's what i normally do um i just i've gotten used to it i guess uh so just jumping turning around and before i land disengage and then just continue running so the idea is i'm moving forward I turn disengage before I hit the ground, and then turn back the original way I was running before I, uh, so like I don't lose any of the forward momentum. But, um, like I was mentioning, you could like jump and attack, and like this whole time I'm, it's the same as just holding forward the whole time, but you can actually still attack things behind you by just holding W to like move forward. Um, holding your right click and then just jumping each time you jump in the air, just turn your back.
Ethan GDH. Thank you for the follow. Twenty-two AP from left. Good. Very well done. Get forty-six. And yes, I know I have a paragon, but I'm not getting it. For reasons. All right. Um. Um, all right, I guess this kind of is another mechanical type thing. Um, this is for measuring distances. Uh, it's easiest if you have an ability that you know the range of. So like, um, if you're a warrior, like Rorik Leap or something like that. But it's actually really nice for something that has like a ground reticle type thing. So like for a hunter, um, like for myself, what I always measure with is flare. Uh, it's 20 yards. Um, for the whole circle. So from one side of the circle to the other side, like the diameter, it's going to be 20 yards. It's a 10 yard radius. So, so, um, so like from the edge of the stairs to So from like this green marker to the edge of the stair, there. So that's gonna be 20 yards um, for the full distance. Now, like if there's some like raid mechanic, you know, I'm the raid leader trying to set up where people are positioning. Like I'll just use like this to roughly gauge how far things are gonna be apart. Um, like here, 20 yards, 40 yards. Uh, so like. There, you can be, say if the boss is being tanked here, um, most range will be, you know, want to be, or I say, I'll say healers, want to be like no more than 40 yards away for something. Uh, but again, it completely depends on the mechanic uh, of how you're setting something up, but that's a useful way to measure is uh, using like the radius of like a, a ground radical thing. Um, and that information you can get in, um, if you don't know the range of something. Um... I don't pull up a lot of stuff, but abilities it should be under. Flare. Alright, so this is, you know, the Hunter's Flare ability. Um, right here, uh, in the effect, it has the radius. It'll have this for other things too, like you know, healing rain. Anything that's like a ground reticle that you are trying to figure out, like the radius of, of it. Um, I think healing rain. Yeah, um area right here. Uh, the effect one. Oh, yeah, it's the radius is also 10 yards, so it would be the exact same as flare. Um, but that's just another example of, uh, like, if you look in the detailed information on a tooltip, like, under the effects, 
it'll usually have that information. Um, this will also tell you like how often something ticks. Uh, like say if it's like a debuff that it doesn't stand in the tooltip. Um, you know, other other things that there are some things that it won't say in the tooltip or in game at all that you can only see in like spell details. <coughs> have my, my random spinning thing. Remember how to do it. Alright. Uh, so here's back to the list of topics. Over something here. But let's find out. some of this before um you like to talk about consumables I haven't talked about that at all um all right so there are a lot of consumables that you know, are useful uh if you're ever interested in like how much like DPS you're getting out of something, like you can sim like, you know, do like a raid bot sim, sim like with or without potions. Um, so like, yeah, you can, you can, you know, compare the actual value that you're getting, from, like, using a potion versus not using a potion, uh, just by changing, like, the quick option. It takes two cents doing it that way, but, uh, 619 to 71, so, like, 550 DPS, but, you know, that's a, a relevant amount. Um. Know, using a potion or not. So it's good to have, you know, things like potions, blast. Having everything available adds up to be quite a bit. Um, but mainly it's, you know, potions, blast are going to be the most important. Potion, blast, food. Um, but you know, most people know that sort of stuff. Um, and then obviously, you know, gems and pants. I guess if you want to consider those consumables. Uh, there are some cases of, like, changing enchants, um, depending on the content you're doing. Like, there are some enchants that are, like, better for, like, constant cleaving stuff, like, Mythic Plus, depending on, um, you know, if it's, like, a fortified teaming week or something like that, where there's going to be a lot of ads that are up for a long time, um, then, you know, you might want to gear yourself for that content specifically for that week, and just consider your enchant, like, consumable, because, I mean, it's, a lot of the enchants aren't that expensive to change, some are, but, um, not much more than like potions, like agility potions, or like, I don't know. Yeah, um, 300, anywhere between three to 400 gold each. Um, so, 
I guess I'll show like you know some of the things that I carry in my bags. Not that I use them all, uh, or often at all. Um, so yeah, augment runes. I hardly ever use these. Um, if I was doing, you know, like it's actually kind of funny. I use them in almost the opposite situation of where I should be using them. Like I use them in heroic all the time, just because I know that there's a lot lower chance of me actually dying in heroic, and um. Like, one, I'll usually get the full duration out of one. Um, so it's not that much of a loss to use it. Um, uh, yeah, like, um, like for an augment rune, like, I'll usually get, like, the full duration out of it as a hunter. Because, like, even if we are what kind of wipe, I'll usually be able to, like, you know, bring death and survive or something. Um, then there's, uh, like, I mean, I will use them also in Mythic, like, if it's something that we're getting closer to a kill, I won't use them, like, from the start, because it's pretty pointless, if a lot of people are still using, like, learning mechanics and stuff, um, but, like, when we're getting consistent pulls, then I start using them, if it's something that's, you know, either we're gonna have a chance for a low percent wipe, or, um, like, if there's an important burn spot, like, I might use it, like, right before that or something. Like, uh, for example, Mythic Cahoon. Like, as you're going into the last phase, that's the only part that really has an important DPS check. That, you know, you can save a lot of gold by just using an Augment Room or something. Um, compared to not using them at all, I guess, uh, if you run out. Um, alright, so yeah, Augment Runes and Visually Potion are like what I use the most, uh, what I keep like the most stocked up on. Um, I also use Prolonged Powers. I do this for like lower Mythic Plus, um, like if I'm doing like 10 and uh, for like the raffle stuff, um, if it's not like complete carry, then I'll just be doing this because it's not really much of a difference if we want or two chest it. Uh, not that big of a deal, so it's just a little bit of help. Uh, they're just cheaper for long powers. Uh, as opposed to very expensive agility potion. Like I would use uh, the prolonged powers, yeah, like you want to try and use it as often as possible. Like if you're doing like prolonged powers um, you should be doing it almost on cooldown, like, as you go through the dungeon, in between trash packs, or, like, you know, in between bosses, like, for the trash packs and stuff, where it's gonna get the most benefit. Um. Uh, coastal healing potions, absolutely. I go through a ton of those each raid, even though I have a lot of self-healing abilities. Um, when I'm BM, at least, uh, Spirit Men, Exhilaration, Post of Healing Potion, Gulf Stone. Between those, like, that's a lot of healing. I use them all at once. It's like. Alright, so yeah, it's 25% there as well. Um, actually, alright, 24. So, uh, 55 plus 24. That's a 79% heal for myself. 
plus the ticking throughout Mend Hot over 10 seconds, so it's 100% heal after 10 seconds, basically. Uh, you can take all four heals at once, which there are definitely times where I do that. Um, so this key bind here actually is macro. Uh, like I stopped casting anything that I'm in the middle of casting. And Spirit Men itself helps down the healing spot and acceleration. Like my, my lay on hand emergency button. Um, yeah. Close to healing pot, really important. Um, I always keep some Tome of the Tranquil Mind in case I need to switch a few talents uh, for Hunter. Not that many talents that I need to swap in most cases. Um, Auto hammer, and I barely ever need to use them, but if there's that rare case where someone needs that, I do always have it. Uh, drums, um, there are the newer drums of Maelstrom. Leatherworker, so let's point this out. Well, here's all the drum patterns. Um, these old ones. I still have them. All right. Um, I wonder how much. All right. Yeah. These ones don't work above level ninety for the drums of rage, um, but I believe mountains still work. Yeah. So these ones work. Uh, drums of the mountain. I don't know how available these mats are, but I know drums of fury are super available for the raw beast side, and these are really easy to make. Uh, those are the, always the ones that I use compared to Maelstrom, which this is way more expensive. Like, I don't even, I don't know. I don't know why anyone would use these ever. Um, I guess, you know, obviously if you only have that pattern, um, like, learn, and you have to, you don't have another choice, but Drums of Fury are way more efficient to craft. Like, basically, just five of the basic leather of that expansion versus 25 plus 10 bones of like the current expansion which like right now this the past three days uh for like um na or like turn ins or whatever have been horse leather which is 60 leather uh for that turn in and then the next two days yesterday and today have been the uh or Slither Barding. Uh, so that's 75 leather. It takes five of these. And leather have been going from anywhere from 20 to 40 gold each for single leather. So it's like... Um, like I know yesterday it was 40 gold each. So this would be like 600 gold uh, for one of these or slither barding, but like uh, for the drums. That's uh, basically a thousand gold just in the leather, for the coarse leather. Plus whatever the ten bones are, they're usually like somewhere between five and six, let's say four to eight gold. So that's another like fifty gold. But alright, let's just say these were. Like the past few days, these have been like a thousand gold in that, um, roughly. But even when the leather is cheaper, like five gold each, even say four gold each, and say these didn't exist, this is still, you know, like a hundred gold to craft like a drums of the maelstrom. Whereas the other one is like, like these are never usually more than like five gold per leather, so it's like. 25 gold max to craft like these drums. So they're always way, way, way cheaper. Um, banner. Um, don't really ever need those, but just have them. Uh, goblin gliders, always great to have for like world questing type stuff to get around quickly. Invisibility potions. I always have them, have my own. Don't usually need them. Uh, Water walking elixir, another thing I don't ever need usually, but I have. Um, probably never really need that because uh, 
in most cases, use like the water walking mount. Um, dark water potion, one of like the swim speed potion thing. Um, again, this wasn't, this isn't really ever used, um, or the swim speed potion. I, I just still have that in my bag. You can try stuff with it better, pretty much. Um, yeah, try stuff is relevant. Um, Avalanche elixirs are still useful, um, or if there's like an ability that knocks you up in the air. Um, I haven't actually tried, but I believe you could do this actually on Mechator. Um, the mythic mechanic that knocks you up in the air. Maybe. Let's see if people are doing it. I haven't looked into it at all, but it would make sense because I know you can do it on like any sort of falling uh, type thing. And this one actually does not share a cooldown with like your DPS potions and stuff. So there's, they're really good to have always. Um, failure detection pylons. Um, or obviously like a raid recovery type thing. Um, Jeweled lockpick. Alright, this is a rare one. Uh, this is used. Um, from Legion Jewel Crafting. It takes uh, it takes one thing great. Um, and it makes a lockpick. But that lockpick can actually be used to open the Tol Gore doors. Which I didn't realize until recently. I thought it took uh, 600 lockpicking skill to do that. But yeah, he's working on it. Shimmer Scale Diving Suit this is another leather working thing. But these are actually really useful. Um, just a buff you apply to yourself. Last 15 minutes, 100% speed. So that kind of, you know, replaces using like uh, the Dark Water Potion. I mean, you can still use it, but like in a Mythic Plus, even like uh, the Shrine of the Storm, like on the way to the last boss, like after you kill that third boss, you like jump in and you have to dodge like the jellyfish or whatever. Uh, you can use this to just go, go through that area twice as fast. Um, gun shoes uh, could be useful. Yeah, actually. I was trying to think of uh, a good use for this. I don't know if they can be used in Mythic Plus or not. I don't know if I actually look at that. I was curious about, um, there's some, like, skips you can do with, like, hunters. Um, like, just, like, deterring thing and running through things or whatever. And then feigning. But, I'll have to look into that. See if you can, like, gun shoes, turtle, and, uh, like, full mobs off to one side. And then let the rest of the party run to the other side. And then you just feign, like, away from everything useful. Uh, bandages, I always have them on me. I've had them since, like, vanilla always on me. Um, very, very rarely used. Like, I doubt I will ever, like, I usually make 20 at the beginning of each expansion. Um, now it's not, there's no more first aid, but I usually always made 20, I will, and I would never go through that whole stack, like, through the whole expansion. But, you know, there's always that case where it could be useful, so I just have it. Um, food buffs. I have, like, one of each type of the food buffs that I would possibly use. Um, like the agility food. Uh, mastery haste crit. Um, and, again, that's just... Basically, none of these are used anymore um, compared to, like, the agility food. But I did used to have all of these to switch my bridge. Uh, Origination array in Old Ear to whatever stat I needed it to be uh, for the encounter because all my stat, well, my stats, those three stats were like real close to even. Uh, so I could choose, like, if there was something that I wanted, like, a ton of, like, Beast Cleave pet damage for, um, I would do that. Um, then I have the flask. Um, I have the old flask still, which I honestly could just completely get rid of now. Don't need this anymore. Yeah, fill my bags. But I was using those like earlier in the expansion just for like low mythic plus. Um, 
other things uh useful brace of awakening this works in raids too like if you survive or i guess even if you don't survive like you can drop it like before you die and uh in res like healer like if you don't have any soul stones for anyone um this thing just like is a I think it was from like a rare like a chest or something uh in the zone and it lets you uh just like, like battle res yourself uh wherever you are outdoor in the so. stuff is all teleport thing here and i think there's another gear random thing uh dark moon fire water i guess these are useful in uh islands uh depending on the week like if you're just trying to click things depending on like your group setup like if you have a tank and uh you just have the tank like picking up everything and kiting it and then uh, like the yeah, dps or whatever and just go around clicking uh behind where the tank was at or there's that weak that's like that has the thing that like makes it so you're less likely to be detected by mobs. Um, you go around and use that and just use the dark moon fire water and just click everything. Super easy. Uh, never get in combat. Like, I guess I could use more, like low level characters leveling in islands. Like if you're worried about dying and stuff. Um, it does not work on everything. So, like, it won't work on, uh, I don't believe it works on the chest, um, but yeah, it, it does work on some of the mining notes, at least. My bank. So, bank has a lot of random stuff, I don't think. 90% of this is useful. Uh, I guess draining living action potions could be useful. Um, and the like with Cahoon, if you got rooted um, or in the thick Cahoon, like upstairs, you could use this to break out of it. These were actually really nice before the bear tatar um like you're like grinding mobs like a, um uh, i was using it actually on my warrior when i was like doing a lot of leather working or not leather working but skinning uh, just go around in between mobs quicker um spider chow also works it used to be really good like for doing like the no healer um dungeons and stuff like just have everyone use that it was nerfed quite a bit. That's about it for the episode of Continuum. I will cover for today um again if anyone has any questions about anything definitely feel free to put it um i'll make sure i cover that next week um yeah thanks everyone for stopping in and i hope you all have a good night um if you need to get in contact with me 
Uh, again, you can just go into my stream chat anytime. Uh, type exclamation point submit, and that will uh, bring up the link for asking questions. That will get emailed to me, so you can do that and uh, wait for me to get something from you. But yeah, uh, otherwise, you can just you know either message me in game. I don't know if I have my. I think my bet on that is like on my stream somewhere. Uh, my like my stream info. Um, so, yeah. Either way, pretty easy to get in contact with. Somehow, I check this stuff pretty often as well. Like my email will go straight to my phone, so I should be able to see it really quickly. But yeah. Glad you enjoyed it. Thanks for sticking around, Sunji. Yeah, sorry for having a cold and sounding all stuffy and stuff, but I started getting sick actually. Like, I started noticing that I was sick like 20 minutes after my stream last week. So, that's how long I've been sick for a week, basically, exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Have a good night, everyone.